It's sort of based around our passion around fresh roasted beans. There's a massive difference. It's about um, life and the vitality of flavour in the cup rather than just a quick fix. Paul's the roaster, I pack the coffee immediately after. We sell it ourselves at the farmer's market. A really intimate kind of connection with something that's such a raw product. I identify as a potter. I think that's on my passport. I make domestic ware, small batch. I also make pieces that I, that I guess are more informed by the visual arts. I've worked with design companies. I kind of do anything that'll pay the rent, really, that uh, making sure that I can bring something of my own to that. I was looking at the different businesses in the Barossa. I was immediately drawn to the smell of roasting coffee because I'm a caffeine addict. When I met and talked with Paul and Janelle, I could see, to me, it was a very craft-based production. And, and rather than, than kind of going against the things I know, I was drawn to the things that I know. We roast just single origin beans. Just makes you go on a little journey with the bean. And it sort of honours the whole process of origin, the earth it came from, the people who grew it. I do love the idea of being, of being taken along with the story of the bean. And in fact, the, the more we talk, the more interested I was in the idea of, of not batching, and not blending, and so that the, those particular characteristics are really drawn on. I was also reminded of my wife talking about travelling through India on the train and the, the chai wala coming along. With, with the tea and, uh, and you finish the cup and you threw it out and it became part of the earth again. So, and again, it, it was through talking to Janelle, this idea of a, the circular nature of things. It was an interest in making the simplest thing that I could and almost kind of anti-luxury item in a way. <laughs> so I'm really drawn to the idea of a a handmade thing that is disposable. The idea of a, di a disposable thing that didn't add to pollution. I watched a couple of videos of old men throwing chai cups. Rather than uh, throwing to a prescribed form that you may have designed, kind of letting the cup happen almost. There would be a variety in the forms, but the approach would be the same. We have a philosophy for roasting people and planet friendly coffee and that means that every coffee bean has its own nuances that are linked to origin. That means each one needs to be treated differently and when you're roasting coffee it's, it's all about time and temperature. Through the whole process I've been able to work out that it is a collaboration but it's just a different mm. notion of. I think I'd agree, it's, it's been quite different to provide some input but not necessarily direction. For example, just the pressing of the coffee beans in the side and the pressing of the coffee tree image in the middle is really a concept that we discussed but wasn't really directed at we have to do that or we have to do it this way. It was an idea and, and then down to your interpretation. I went back to a photograph from the very first time I came here and I realised that uh, if I fired the cups at different stages that I can end up mirroring that first, very first thing that happened, which was... Mirroring that completely. roasting process, yeah. yeah. At every different temperature you would put out, so you got this beautiful line blend. Because that brings me to the disposable things that are fired very low, which will be at the pale end of the colour spectrum, and then you can fire the terracotta clay very high, so it almost goes black. But then it, then it actually becomes much more functional. So there, there's a, you know, there's a very simple echo there of, of the bean.